today I want to talk with you about sterilization track and trace, which is a, still a hot topic for us in the industry. I think some of you are facing the challenges now. And what I want to do today is share some experiences of how we are implementing this complex process on the CDMO environment. So before I start, for the ones that do not know FEDER, I want to uh, speak a little bit about us, what do we do. Um, we are a privately owned CDMO. Uh, in short, that means you cannot buy us but you can join us, you can work with us, you can supply to us, and uh, we always look forward to, to get new uh, relationships with people. Um, we have more than 35 years of experience in aseptic filling. Uh, we don't have products of our own. That means we have no conflict of interest with our customers. We are a contract uh, development manufacturing organization. Um, we are headquarters in Ravensburg, uh, close to the Bodensee Lake in south of Germany. Uh, we had a sales last year of about 406 million euro. Uh, today we have about 3,300 employees. We are expert for high quality produced and thermally sterilized drug delivery systems. Uh, the top 10 farm and biotech companies are our customers. Uh, we have resources for preclinical development through to global market supply. We have experience with global regulatory authorities. Uh, we have more than 35 customer products with FDA, FDA approval, and we are lyophilization specialist. Talk now a little bit more about the Feather Packaging Service Overview. Um, we basically do secondary packaging of vials which we pack in, into kits, uh, cartridges which we pack into pens, syringes which we pack into plunger rod and backstops in auto injectors or safety device. We basically do, let's say, for less complex process from labeling, but to also we do a more complex process as uh, pen assembly and auto injectors, which we are specialists in, in this area as well. For further secondary packaging, uh, it's not all about the filling, but secondary packaging. Quality and safety comes first. Uh, we understand we are having a growing home care segment that has the need to have more easier to use safety devices and when we talk about safety, patient safety, we have about having more um, uh, regulatory inspections, right? And we are facing that even more on the last years and we understand that this area is also very important and we really look into uh, very closer, um, not only the filling but secondary packaging is a very important area for us as well. When we talk about regulatory requirements and patient safety, now we come to the topic of sterilization, which is a new global requirement that, uh, that drove the need of sterilization. We are talking about patient safety, about protecting our patients for anti-counterfeiting drugs, but we are talking about having a more safer, more secure, more efficient drug supply chain. What make sterilization special, right? Not only to FETA, not only for the CMO, but for the whole industry, for the whole pharma companies and biotech companies, is that there are different regulatory requirements and guidelines for sterilization around the world. And when I talk, when I talk about different requirements, I talk about, for example, uh, different timelines, right? Countries are implementing that in different timing. I'm talking about countries implementing sterilization, countries that want to implement the food track and trace system, for example, China and Brazil. Europe wants just to implement sterilization, so it's a different process. Um, we also have different, let's say, sterilization number system. For example, the GTIN and NTIN. We don't have a standard that as well. And we have also different ways of doing the reporting. 
So that makes realization special. So as a CDMO, and also the form and biotech companies, you need to be flexible to implement everything. We all know that sterilization brings the benefits of protecting our patients about anti-counterfeiting drugs. And we also have to and want to meet the regulatory requirements. But think about it, track and trace and aggregation, the benefits goes beyond regulatory requirements and patient safety. That means about having a more controlled supply chain. And from our experience with some customers that we have, even for some countries which this is not a regulatory uh, requirement, some customers already decided to embrace the concept of track and trace and have a more secure supply chain, have a better control of their inventory, having a better control of maybe um, um, possible future recalls. And for sure, this is the trend. And some customers already embrace this, uh, this concept as well. Now talking more about practical terms, what, and this is, this is not a guideline, okay? But I want to just to share our experience, how we did, and maybe give some guidance to you guys, uh, what we can do, what you can do to implement realization. If you want to do that, if, well, if you have to do that, and I think you all have to do that, don't just start, but please invest your time in, in implementing and preparing a good plan first. Right, and when I talk, these are just some listing about points that we have considered in our concept study. Look internally first in terms of uh, what you have for systems. Uh, how can you have a synergy of sterilization in your current systems? Uh, do workshop with potential solution providers. Generate a process map. For, for, your, for your production area, for your IT systems. Uh, analyze the gaps you have on IT and the production area. Very important, get an overview of the overall costs that you have. So when you talk about costs, about realization, people say a lot, right? 100,000, 1 million, 2 million, it really depends. You really need, this is really individual, you need to get an overview about your packaging and what are the costs that are involved. Implement a roadmap for production line upgrade. Please do not forget to consider your internal resources. And the reason is serialization, it's not the only project you guys are implementing in your companies, right? Very difficult to find engineers nowadays, right? So. You need to evaluate your internal resources and priorize them. Define implementation timelines in line with regulatory timelines, for sure. So again, how do you prioritize? Very important, define leadership and a project team. You need to get everything involved and good informed. Also very important, get management support because some of people say, and we all know, there's a lot of costs with sterilization. Management do not like to hear we have costs, but you need to keep them informed about, about the project, about the process, how important that is, and keep them informed about progress and issues that could pop up, because they will pop up, issues will pop up. And again, very important, don't forget your strategy should be continuously revealed. And the reason is that we are seeing regulatory timelines changing a lot. We faced that last year with United States, right? We, always, we all here thought that California law would come. Then that was killed by a national law. Then sterilization was postponed in two years. Let's see if European Union will 
come in 2070 or 2018. Um, so always review that, always review your strategy. Again, our experience how we did that. Again, not a guideline, just to share the experience how we did, because this is a complex project. And we wanted to divide the project into three areas to, well, we want to divide the complexity. We actually divided the sterilization project into three areas. One is the IT solution, which is a very pretty complex area. Then we divide it to the engineering solution, which is the upgrade of our lines and the engineering project. And then we have uh, customer specific, which are customer projects. We need to implement customer specifics. So there are basic three areas, three different budgets, but they are of course all uh, connected. From our experience, from FEDA's experience, implementation of sterilization takes about two years. So as I start my talk, we start with the concept study which is basically your plan, what do you have to do, timing, costs, suppliers, get an over, overall overview about, about uh, your strategy. Then you start the implementation of the IT solution. It's a pretty long, let's say, project, pretty complex, takes a lot of time take some time, some changes on the way. We advise you heavily to start with your IT part, which is the most complex one, and not starting implementing your packaging lines. Start with the IT first. When you have a good basis of the IT, then you start implementing uh, the engineering solution, basically uh, upgrading your packaging lines. And, uh, and then in parallel, then you start your customer projects. So this whole process took us about two years. It's not something that from our experience, again, you can implement from, from, from day to night. It took us some time and uh, you have to have your time also to implement, change your strategy and uh, yeah. Now coming to the packaging area, um, you should consider more than one technical option uh, for your production area. Basically you have two options. One is one mobile unit, which you can, it's pretty flexible, you can move through different packaging lines. And the other one, it's a fixed line, fixed sterilization unit, which is, uh, we call that like a line upgrade. Uh, again, uh, we here divorce into packaging lines. Uh, you basically have two options, and I think you should evaluate both of them. We basically did it, we evaluate both of them, and there are some uh, positive and negative aspects of each solution. Uh, basically, the mobile unit is a more, let's say, a very flexible solution, while the line upgrade, the fixed uh, implementation of the line is suitable for high batch sizes. Um, in terms of packaging line influence, we see during the qualification phase, uh, the mobile unit has a, has a less uh, packaging line influence because you can do that offline while the, the fixed unit, there's an impact then on the, on the packaging line, right? Because it's everything fixed, then you have to have a better plan when you do the qualification phase. In terms of line speed, as the mobile unit is a manual process, uh, and manual process always need more time, um, you see a, a more reduction of your line speed, while the fixed unit, you see a less uh, reduction of line speed. And I'm not telling they will not have an impact of your line speed because both, both options will have, but one more and one less. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, volume capacity, the mobile unit is more suitable for 
smaller batch sizes. And we always see customers that want to have, let's say, uh, smaller batch sizes, so you need to be flexible. And the, and the fixed unit or the lineup grade has a, it's more efficient for bigger batch sizes. In terms of additional manpower for the mobile unit, you need extra people to work on it because this is a manual process. While the fixed unit, there's no additional manpower needed. So to summarize, the mobile unit is a very flexible solution for the smaller batches and for manual packaging, while the fixed the fix line is more suitable for high batch sizes and high degree of automatization. So again, you need to evaluate your packaging lines, evaluate your strategy, check your batch sizes, and decide what is better for your company to implement taking into consideration those aspects that are listed. The target, again, for a CDMO uh, as FEDER is to be as flexible as possible to cover all our customer needs and, of course, all of our regulatory authorities' needs. And we have built, and that's why it took us quite some time to develop the IT solution because we wanted to develop something as flexible as possible with a service offer that could be able to match all our current customer needs and regulatory authorities' uh, needs. So basically, we have different specific interface specifications, customer that have cloud solutions and customer that have their own solutions. We have different authority specific code structures, 1D linear data code, 2D data matrix code. We have different customers and authority specific data exchange requirements, different transfer protocols, transfer messages, different ways of doing reportings. And of course, on the customer level, we have artwork changes, and some customer want to implement some uh, specific code information, which we are also able to do. So by the end of the day, what our customer expects from us as a CDMO, they expect us to meet the regulatory requirements. They expect us to implement that on time on time that this is a regulatory requirement and of course on time that they need to implement their own track and trace solutions. And they also expect us to be flexible, to be flexible on the IT landscape, to be flexible on the engineering uh, project. And as a CDMO, you have, there's no option, you have to meet those three basic, uh, let's say, characteristics. Otherwise, you are out of the game. So if you want to learn more about FEDER and also about serialization at FEDER, you are very welcome to visit us at the booth number 1G34. We will have a small reception today at 3 o'clock. Uh, it will be very nice to see some of the faces there and to network with you. And uh, I hope you have learned something today. I could share some our experience with serialization with you. And I hope to see you there. Thank you.